Shreve handedly beat several other candidates that were challenging him as well. To the Hogsett campaign, it was a packed house at his election party, and he received a very warm welcome from his supporters. The mayor did receive his most formidable challenge from State Representative Robin Shackelford, but she conceded the race to him this evening. One of the most talked about topics in the mayoral primary has been the record level of crime that this city has seen in recent years. Hogsett wasted no time attacking, attacking his new rival. Shreve saying he talks down about Indianapolis and will take the city backward. One vision wants you to believe that the best way to go forward in Indianapolis is to go back to the good old days. And you have my commitment that I'll be damned if I'm going to let someone drag us back into the past. Now, for his part, Shreve easily won his primary. During his speech to supporters, he said eight years of the Hogshead administration has been way too long. He said it's time for change in the city. Shreve has blanketed the airwaves with ads attacking Hogshead specifically on crime here in the city. Our sitting mayor, Joe Hogshead, is not a bad guy. I, I, I worked with him in his first term when I was on council. He's not a bad person but he has governed badly. And his leadership has proved inadequate to the challenges facing our city. So the campaign for mayor of Indianapolis officially underway tonight. Now that we have the two candidates, Hogsett and Shreve gonna face off in November, and then the voters will decide who will be the next mayor of Indianapolis. Live in Indianapolis tonight, Max Lewis, Fox 59 News. Max, thank you. And voters across the Circle City also weighed in on a referendum for Indianapolis Public Schools. That referendum passed with about 59% of the vote. It grants a request for $410 million to upgrade district buildings. This afternoon, an Indianapolis polling location was placed on lockdown. There was a SWAT situation near IPS Clarence Farrington School 61. Police searched this home you're seeing here, but they didn't find the suspect. The lockdown was later lifted. The Marion County Election Board asked voters to avoid that school during the lockdown. Now, overall, voter turnout in Marion County was up 45% from the last municipal election, from the last primary. More than 78,000 people voted in Marion County this year. That's up from about 53,000 in 2019. In-person early voting was up about 10,000 people this year, and voting today was up about 13,000 overall. Now to another race that we've been following for Carmel Mayor. Council member Sue Finkham is the winner of the Republican primary there. Seven term incumbent Mayor Jim Brainerd announced he would not be reseeking election. Now we spoke to Finkham at her watch party this evening and she said this. I think this victory means that they like the plan I have put together to unite Carmel and take us to a new level. I think they like my business experience and they like the fact that um, I wasn't too extreme to either way. I wasn't stopping everything, but at the same time, I wasn't going to be pedaled down and keep everything exactly the same. I think I bring fresh ideas, and I think I can bring along people who want to be part of our future. Finkham will face Democrat Miles Nelson, a council member who ran uncontested. This will be the first time in nearly 30 years that Carmel will have a different mayor. Something of an upset there in that Republican primary tonight. Westfield will also have a new mayor next year after incumbent Andy Cook decided not to run for re-election. City Councilor Scott Willis won a close race over Jake Gilbert in the Republican primary. So far, no Democrats are running for mayor there in Westfield. In Zionsville tonight, former local news anchor John Stair received 55% of the vote, defeating Jane Burgess in the Republican primary. Incumbent Mayor Emily Styron has announced that she's not running for re-election. She's a Democrat. So far, no Democrats have announced plans to run this year in Zionsville. South of Indy now to Greenwood, incumbent Republican Mayor Mark Myers won the Republican primary there over Joe Hubbard. No Democratic primary there in Greenwood. Voters in Bloomington are electing a new mayor this year. Carolyn Thompson won the Democratic primary with about 43% of the vote over Susan Sandberg and Don Griffin Jr. No Republican primary this year in Bloomington. An extremely tight race, meanwhile, in Anderson. The Republican mayoral candidates are separated by just 13 votes in that primary. With 100% of the precincts reporting, City Councilman John Bell has the most votes at 
853. That's followed by Robert jo Robert Joswak, rather, and that's 849 votes, and then Carol Miller with 840. The Democratic primary also pretty tight there as well. Just 32 voters separated the incumbent mayor, Thomas Broderick Jr., from Rodney Chamberlain. And again, one of the most closely watched races tonight in Indianapolis with the mayoral matchup now set for the fall. Mayor Joe Hogg said against Jefferson Shreve, but the other big stories we mentioned was the turnout. And as we mentioned earlier, it was way up from previous municipal elections. UND political science professor Dr. Laura Wilson had this to say about the turnout when I spoke with her earlier this evening. Obviously, having competition on both sides of the aisle was great for voters because it gave them choice. It gave them difference in terms of policy and perspective, and people respond to that. When we look at these numbers, too, I think certainly in Marion County, having the open voting centers, having the ability, the access to early voting uh, certainly plays a role. And you can continue to see election results scrolling there at the bottom of your screen. We're also tracking them on our website tonight at fox59.com. And we'll have much more coming up Sunday morning on this week's edition of In Focus.